show is a part of the Quite The Thing Media Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to episode 32 of the Gamers Watch podcast. This is the season finale episode and my name is Harry. As always, I am joined by Sean. Hey, hey. And once again, we have the Quim Meister General. Ooh. We've got Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cans. How you doing, Dunks? You are good? I'm tired, mate. It's been a grown yeah. up. 36 yeah. now. Just everything's just a chore. You old bastard. Uh, I mean, I'm really good. 36. Oh, yeah, hello. All right, granddad, let's talk you about the You met me when I was 30. <laughs> Can you believe that? Yeah, I know. I <sighs> met you when you were older than I am now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. You, you fucking arsehole. <laughs> But we all know what it means with Duncan back. It means I get to put on my best radio voice and say, in this episode, we will be going to Duncan Voices Indie Choices. Uh, He'll be talking about a couple of games, Splitgate and The Wild at Heart. And as always with this show, if you do enjoy it, please do share this with a couple of friends. Um, I'm also going to say that this week you should share it with your local police officers. No other reason than it's the first thing that popped to my head. So next time you see a police car going past, flag them down, wave them over and say, Here, mate, you heard about that gamer's watch? <laughs> and see if they've uh, <laughs> see if they've heard about it. It's hot fuzz for any chance. It say. is indeed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So share it with your local bobbies. <laughs> Follow us on Twitter. We are at Gamers Watch Crew. Leave us a review if you can on your platform of choice. Oh. And you can now subscribe to Gamers Watch Podcast on YouTube. And you can't search for us because we've got no content up there. And another podcast called Gamers Watch shows up. So you can find the link to it in our bio, which is linktr.ee slash Gamers Watch Podcast. No, no luck listening to them podcasts then. It's just the one podcast, actually. <laughs> Should we move on to Xbox Very News good. brought to you by Midweek Mix Up? That was great work. Uh, that's my yeah. favourite moment of the podcast. Ah, I love that. I'm going to have that as my ringtone. <laughs> it's your ringtone? Yeah, we've got plenty of time to ruin this. Uh, Sean, shall we kick off? The season finale with Xbox News brought to you by the Midweek Mix-Up. I wouldn't have it any other way. Sweet. So, Sean, do you want to talk about a few new games that have hit the service since our last recording? Yes. The uh, the two... Well, one big one is Hades, finally. No. No, 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 no. The big one is Microsoft Solitaire Collection oh, Premium sorry. Edition is coming to Game Pass PC. Yeah, that one, that one slipped under my radar right. a bit. The slightly smaller one is Hades. Yeah. Uh, what else has come out, Sean? Uh, Art of Rally, which we were both looking forward to and we'll be talking about later. And then this week, or the week just gone, because it comes out in two days of recording, is 12 minutes, finally. Ooh, and nothing exciting. else matters. Nothing else matters. Don't care. Psychonauts 2 is apparently next week. Couldn't give a shit. 12 minutes. Yes. That's where it's at. I mean, I'm very excited for Psychonauts 2, <laughs> Sean. You see, I say. So... <laughs> Don't, you know, even though we are blocked on Twitter by Double Fine, you know, again, just going to mention it, they have blocked us, the bastards. The wet wipes. Um, I'm, yeah, those toads. I'm really <laughs> looking forward to 12 minutes and I, I just, I can't wait. 20 hours long, apparently. Really? Yeah. And not, and not 12 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we both had the, the similar thought there, Dunks. Great minds think alike. Mm. Actually, did you know that that's not the full phrase? It's great minds think alike and fools seldom differ. So are we the great minds or are we the dumbasses? Debatable. We're the, we're the dumbasses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, with Hades having come out, me and Sean have been playing it. Art of Rally, me and Sean have been playing it. I just want to say one thing. If one more person mentions to me that only 7% of the sales were for Xbox for Hades, very quick one. They're UK boxed figures. 91% of games bought in the UK are digital. And if you're using that metric to determine if a game is sold correctly and sold well, I'm going to use the metric that whatever is at the top of the UK vinyl chart is the best-selling song in the world. Uh, that's going to be what I do from now on. So George Harrison is currently the top. But did, did you know that 100% of the copies of Hades played in uh, the Avenue and Newton Abbott were played on the Xbox? Yes, 
And that's about the same metric because it's ridiculous that people are arguing about boxed copy physical sales in the UK market, which I worked out is 0.05% of total games sold worldwide. It's so pointless of a metric. It is literally like saying that the game that sells the most in the avenue in Newton Abbott is the top selling game in the world at the time. It's such a pointless metric. However, those same people are now claiming that GTA 5 doing well in the sales chart is nothing to do with Game Pass. But it's the same sales chart that they were saying that, oh, look, Hades isn't selling very well on the Xbox. So if you're one of those people, you're an idiot. It's like I tweeted right? a minute ago. It's just all about how you frame the narrative. Because people are like, yeah. oh, well, it's off Game Pass. So it's selling really well. So Game Pass is shit. And it's like, okay, yeah, because well, it went on sale. Well, yeah, well, maybe <laughs> people loved it on Game Pass. So they fucking bought it. Just and actually, <laughs> if they did enjoy shit. it, if they did enjoy it on Game Pass and then they bought it, congratulations, the devs got paid twice because Microsoft <laughs> paid them to put the game on Game Pass and then they put the game for sale and then people buy it. So they make the money twice. So just shut up and enjoy video games. Uh, is that too much to ask? I don't, I don't understand why everyone argues all the time. <laughs> Talking about video games, how excited are you all to play the new 4K update for the user interface? <laughs> You're you know, buzzing. There's, there's one thing I thought the entire time I've had my Series S is like, this this dashboard just, just needs a little bit of pizzazz. Uh, yeah. A little, I don't know, just 4K UI that I'm really, really bothered about. I mean, I can't wait for the digital foundry breakdown of, of it where they go into the frame rates and they, they dissect the frame rate of the user interface. I couldn't give a shit. Like, it, it, the the screen's going to look a bit clearer on a screen that I look at for maybe eight seconds when I turn my Xbox on. Like, whatever. Uh, congratulations. I mean, if anyone was screaming for this, you're screaming for the wrong thing. I don't get it, but... Pfft. That's enough of that, because I can't be bothered with that. Um, Sean, what's Phil Spencer said this week? Uh, Phil Spencer has confirmed that Game Pass will not be coming to the Switch or the PlayStation, but has had positive conversations with Valve in relation to the Steam Deck. I mean, the PlayStation one was obvious, yeah. but the Switch one I was, yeah, it was very obvious. slightly hopeful for. Yeah, I thought there was an off chance that it could come to the Switch, but... Eh. You know, it's not the end of the world, but I think no. it's great that they've had these conversations about the Steam Deck, but I just, I really hope that it's not cloud-based, please. Um, please make yeah, it a native app. It'll be on the browser, won't it? Like cloud streaming, I thought. Yeah, I'm hoping that it will just have Game Pass on as like an app and you can download the games to the actual Steam Deck so that you don't just have to stream it all via the cloud. Because as we'll talk about a little bit later, I've had nothing but trouble from the cloud for the past week and a half. Uh, so mm. please make it native. I, I, I'm saying that like I'm going to fucking buy one of those things. As, as good as it would be, <laughs> I got a feeling it's going to be cloud gaming for uh, Steam Deck. Yeah. Because otherwise he would he would just mention Steam and not Steam Deck because they would obviously integrate Xbox Game Pass into the Steam client on PC as well, if that's the case. That's something I never thought of. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm. Is it going to be... It might, in the future it might be, but for launch of Steam Deck, it'll, it'll be like cloud gaming. Yeah, yeah, you never know. It can lead, it can lead somewhere else. They want TV apps as well, don't they? Microsoft, so... And their little stick. It's a good point to start with. And their little dongle, their Series C or whatever. The, <laughs> U, series USB, whatever they're going to call it. Phil's little um, dongle. Phil's little dongle. So he's got a little dongle on one end and he's got a chainsaw dildo up the other. Oh, uh, oh God. Sean. Yes. This next, this next bit of news that I've written down is so stupid that I don't think I can actually say it. I don't think you're allowed to say it. <laughs> No, I'm not going to say that, <laughs> for fuck's <laughs> sake. I mean, I can't read out the segment bit because I'm looking at it and my brain is so exhausted by even the thought of someone so stupid to think this that I don't even have the energy to explain it. So can you just say it, Sean? Okay, so some people think that the Back for Blood zombies are oh. saying the N-word at certain points. Ooh. And... Um, they're not this no. really reminds me of that dumb fucking tiktok craze where someone would play a sound over and over again it'll be like blap 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 but then you get that it's that pareidolia where if you read the word it sounds like it, you'll hear like cunt 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 and then they'll put twat up and it'll be like twat 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 so yeah. you just hear what you want to fucking hear 
someone's, you know what, you know someone's had heard. a joke and like it sounds like that word and everyone's cottoned onto it and like, oh yeah, it definitely sounds like that. They haven't fucking said it. Come on. Do you know what I heard it. when I watched the video? Is I heard a zombie make a noise. <laughs> and even the person playing the game in the clip that circulated around Twitter laughed about it like, oh, what did he just call me? But it was clearly like a joke. And he even came out afterwards and he was like, yeah, the zombie clearly just made a zombie noise. And then the development team had to put a tweet out and be like, we're changing the noises because people got offended. But the person who recorded the clip on Twitch didn't get offended and other people got offended on his behalf for something that didn't happen. Yeah, they had to... It was, Is, am I getting that right? Yeah, Turtle Rock had to s- explain that it's um, some of the way they've done the noises is like, I guess randomly generated is the best way to explain it. Yeah. So it's like the uh, the computer itself picks different sounds and like meshes them together and it just so happens in that specific way, if you're thinking of that word, it will sound like that word. So it's like no one's... No actual human has physically put that sound clip into the game sort of thing it's just been generated so that they've said they're going to take it out i want to just remind people and this is something that hits home for me so ubisoft are currently being investigated for historic sex offenses and the fact that they're paying off high members of their management team to get away with sex offences and also hiring people that they know have historic cases of sex offences against them into environments with lots of women and then not protecting those women. Um, Activision Blizzard, that boycott didn't last long, did it? Because everyone's hyped for the uh, Diablo 2 beta. We will be boycotting Activision Blizzard indefinitely on this podcast. But again, I want to remind people that a female member of their staff killed herself because pictures of her vagina were passed around the offices in the Cosby suite at Activision Blizzard and that several members of male staff there have ongoing sexual offence trials against them. We have EA who actively promote gambling to children every year with their FIFA titles and nobody's getting upset about those things because, oh, Diablo 2 looks good. Oh, Far Cry 6 comes out soon. Oh, FIFA 22 have got an open beta. But what they're forgetting is that those those actual things that are happening have real world consequences. Children, there's 23,000 children in the UK with a gambling problem. Um, A woman killed herself at Activision Blizzard because of the behaviour of members of staff and people are getting upset about a randomly generated noise in a video game. Um, It's just dumbfounding. I don't want to talk about it anymore because it's it's really aggravating me that this was the thing that people chose to get upset about. People instantly forgot about Activision Blizzard sex offences because I want to play the Diablo beta. It's disgusting. Um, So they weren't making that noise. It was a complete freak accident and Ubisoft, Activision Blizzard and EA are doing things a million times worse um, to the point where it's killing people. So that's the end of it. Anyway, the winner of the midweek mix up <laughs> Game Pass <laughs> Ultimate six month prize. <laughs> Straight in there. Um, let's lighten the mood a bit because otherwise this is going to be a terrible recording for me and I'm just going to get angrier and angrier. Um, we've got a big, big congratulations to say to John McMillan, who is one of our followers on Twitter, who listened to the last four episodes, sent us all the passwords, and was randomly picked out of the hat. So we'll be contacting you soon. Did John pick Quim or Taco? Uh, John picked (laughs) Taco. Good man. He picked cat food and he picked taco. Um, and I won't be bleeping Quim anymore because I can't be bothered. <laughs> Wait, what was, what was the, the other word, one instead of cat food? Quim. Or, no, that was Quim. What was? Oh, there wasn't another one to taco, no, was there? We just followed it up. <laughs> there up. wasn't another one with taco. It's just that Duncan said it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, and I've... you said... I... To cat food, they both smell like fish. Yeah, I thought, so... I thought I missed one then for a second. I was trying to remember. No, no, there was plenty of quims. Don't you fucking worry about that, Sean. <laughs> you know, um... I had to edit all those fuckers out. You know, Loki <laughs> says it in, in an Avengers film. He calls people a mewling quim. And I looked what? it up Does and, he? It means you, and, and it means you whining cunt. <laughs> <laughs> you mewling quim. <laughs> you mewling quim. You whining cunt. Oh, great. What? That's great. amazing. What a great way. Oh, Matt, that's the new insult that Just we're going to be using. Change yep. my Twitter handle. Yeah. Oh, Get the merch the printed thing is, on a shirt. Is, we've obviously <laughs> got our listener, Bleep, that tunes in every week with his wife. Is his name now Quim? <laughs> <laughs> 
wife of Quim. <laughs> Does that work? Because <laughs> every time it was being bleeped, all I was imagining was his name. Oh, yeah. So, fuck it, he's called Quim from now on. Ah. <sighs> So yeah, congratulations, Sorry. John, on winning the prize. Yeah, well done, John. <laughs> congratulations. Um, I'm glad Sean. it's you offending our listeners this time instead of me. Yeah, no, no dirty Mexicans. No, nope. coming out of my just life, Sean. straight up calling one of our main listeners a cunt. <laughs> yes, pretty much. No, I wait that a, a whining cunt. Yeah. A whining <laughs> cunt. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the clarification, there, Duncan. And we hope he tunes in to season three. <laughs> Yeah, what an end to season two. How did Love it go? Queen. Well, we called our listener a cunt, so it went pretty well. Uh, Sean, sure. yeah, Whew. we need to do Game Pass or Play, don't we? We do indeed. This was a game I was very excited for. Really, really excited. Duncan, did you play any of it? Uh, I think so. <laughs> what game are we talking about? <laughs> the Ascent. I'm looking at the wrong segment. Um, I, uh, briefly, about an hour uh, yeah. for me. Just a bit of shit. <laughs> yep. Pretty much. Sean, yep. you first, you talk about your experience with The Ascent because you were able to actually play and complete it. Mm. And once you've talked through the sort of the narrative of the game that doesn't exist, the story of the game yeah. that no one understood, yeah. um, the controls of the game that will just run backwards and shoot in front of you, uh, the AI that was massively unbalanced in Solo, uh, and the online that didn't fucking work, I will then come in <laughs> And have my say and repeat on that. this 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 game. Uh, Sean, how did you find the ascent? Um, it was all right, I guess. Like I I had fun while playing it. The mainly because of the like abilities and that, not the actual gunplay itself. Uh, yeah. the st- the story just t- it starts off all right and then just fucking tails off completely and doesn't really make much sense kind of does the same thing um that i said about narita boy where it uses its own like phrases and terms without ever explaining what they mean um yes and you also you also have a codex which must be like 200 pages worth of text which it might explain in them but i'd rather them explain it in gameplay than me reading a book instead of playing the game um yeah one thing I will say though, and I'll probably get blacklisted by a uh, Colin Moriarty here, is for the single player, switch it down to easy because the, yes. the AI uh, is so badly flawed in some of its designs that it just becomes unplayable. I'm gonna say it right now. Yeah, the, unplayable the or medium just medium and or just the not medium fun. And hard difficulty AI for me was utterly unplayable for to single the point player. where even on easy mode on single player, I struggled. Yeah, um, I, there was there was a few sections oh. I still struggle with on easy, but um, I think the main flaw is it it goes on about how taking cover is so important to like surviving and the combat and that you can't but, fucking take cover, but you can't just run at you. Yeah, you can't take cover in single player. I mean, you you can barely take it cover in multiplayer as well, but it's not as because bad because you've AI, got other people. All the AI is programmed to do is just run at you. Yeah, there's there's no the AI isn't programmed to take cover. There's no yeah, there's no cover or different attack patterns for the vast majority of the AI. So they they just sprint at you. So there's no chance to take cover because you can't kill them all before they get to you. And then... my entire playthrough consisted of me running backwards and shooting forward. That was it. Yeah, Run backwards, I'd... shoot forward. Yeah, I'd, I'd just I'd just basically be dashing about in a circle around the uh, area. Yeah, but it's it's still. I enjoyed it. I guess my time with it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have completed it. But yeah, it's the AI. The AI is flawed. Um, multiplayer is a lot more fun as well if you can get it to work. I luckily the Which only I couldn't. <laughs> yeah, the only problems I had was with like creating the initial lobby, and we'd basically just have mm. to keep quitting the game, restarting it. But once we all allowed in the lobby and the game started, we didn't have any problems. But I think my uh, my luck was a bit better than yours with it. <laughs> Yeah, so Duncan, I don't know if you've seen my experience with oh, the ascent. Also, but I'll, I just want to say, I'll talk through it in a second. The, the game looks stunning. Like the world mm. is lovely. 
that's that's yeah that's the, the, main the game does plus. look great um the the only positive that i will take from this game is that the environments and the um the sort of setting of the game so the soundtrack and the visual artwork is really good mm. and again we did talk about it didn't we dunks we need to cut some slack to smaller teams only 12 people made this game um mm. but here's my experience with the ascent so i played it solo played about two and a half hours Went through all of the tutorials. Well, they're not tutorials either. They're splash screens, and you have to press B for far too long to get yeah, rid you of have the to, screen. You have to hold it for some reason instead of just pressing it, which I didn't get. Yeah. So I went through all of that, got the first weapons, got my first ability, defeated the first boss, did a few side missions, and then my save file just fucking vanished. So I had to play through it again. So this was in solo. So I played through it again, defeat, got through all of those fucking tutorials again, defeat the first boss, did all those side missions again, went to the first area uh, where it was completely unplayable because of the shitty AI. Um, it also doesn't tell you like what way, doesn't tell you if an area you're about to go into is massively overpowered for you. So I like went into an area and just got annihilated immediately by massively overpowered enemies. And then it started me right the way back at the checkpoint. And I had to do all of this fucking shit again. Got through, got to an area where there was these two big, like, bosses um, in this, like, underground layer. Having probably played it now for about three hours. Um, and my entire playthrough just consisted of me running backwards one way and shooting forward the other way. And then whenever a bullet would arrive, just dodging out of the way and like that was it um, just constantly non-stop run backwards shoot forwards run backwards shoot forwards because like sean said the cover system is fucking pointless so that was about three hours of gameplay so did all the tutorials did all the um tutorial screens learned how to play the game and then i thought you know what i need to play this multiplayer so joined in with jordan one of our listeners in an online lobby couldn't join it could not join Constantly timing out, cannot join, cannot join, time out, time out. We tried for about 20 minutes and then I got in. Then it dropped. So we had to do it again. And I got in after about five minutes. We get into a game. And do you know what this fucking game does? When it drops you into multiplayer, it doesn't cross anything over from single player in regards to your progress. It brings over your guns and your weapons and your armor. But I had to do all of the tutorial screens again in the middle of a gunfight. So I pressed the pause button. And then it locked me in a pause screen and I could not exit the pause screen. Couldn't move, couldn't get out of it. They defeated all the enemies in the area and the only way out of it is they had to close the lobby to kick us all out to restart the lobby. So this is half an hour in. I'd managed to play for three minutes before it hard crashed on me. Get into another lobby, absolutely fine. Apart from the fact none of my weapons were firing. Nothing, nothing coming out of them. That lasted about two minutes and then my weapons were firing but they were making no noises. Then when they were making noises, it was just making a constant non-stop gunfire noise from my specific location that was like unbearably loud and the closer other people got to me the louder they could hear it we managed to get our way all the way through to the main bosses of the level and they didn't fucking spawn in <laughs> so the game soft locked us we couldn't do anything we spent half an hour fighting with the lobbies to let us in 20 minutes of me pissing about with broken weapons guns that don't fire constantly telling me how to do things that i've already learned how to do having to fucking hold that b button down constantly every menu that i went into was oh if you want to equip a weapon do that like, i'd already done all of that in the solo but it didn't cross over that into the multiplayer and then yeah got to the final boss of the level and they didn't fucking spawn so we couldn't do anything and we just literally walked around in an empty map for 10 minutes wondering what to do and i uninstalled the game from my system um the frustration is i really like isometric shooters i really enjoy them and there's a game that i'm going to recommend called ruiner that is on xbox that is phenomenally good and it was on game pass a few years ago play that instead of the ascent buy it do not install the ascent in its current form it is utterly broken. So, and that's my review So not for The Ascent. quite as smooth of a launch as Flight Sim on console. No. <laughs> <laughs> if Flight Simulator was a crash on launch, this was the factory making the plane <laughs> blowing up. <laughs> it keeps happening. Utterly home, unplayable. These, these shitty Game Pass launches keep happening. Um, it's really frustrating. I say it every week, I'm sure. Dungeons and Dragons for shit. Can't play Art of Rally. Uh, Flight Simulator launch was gash. Yes, <laughs> this is shit. It's getting a bit tedious. Um, I am not holding out much hope for Forza Horizon Five or Halo. 
a Halo's, a Halo's a worry for sure. Mm. Mm. I think Forza, I have a bit more hope with just because Playground Games have a track record sort of thing. Whereas, obviously, The Ascent is... And uh, a Sobo for Flight Sim, they're not the highest of developers, sort of thing. Well, mm. let's see. Let's see how Twelve Minutes and Psychonauts do. Yeah, um, that hopefully will sway me. But mate, I was banging on saying, "Oh, Metro have given it a bad review, three out of ten. Wow, <laughs> having played solo for about an hour and having had a bit of fun in it. Yeah. Um, nah, Metro were right. This game is turd. This game is not good. Um, I cannot. Look, we don't give scores, but my review is that this is a game pass totally a game pass there was nothing that i enjoyed about my experience in this other than the way it looked and for how pretty the game is the ai is broken and the online is busted i i'm gonna kind of go down the middle of mine and say it's a a try and play so if you if you end up having my luck and it goes smoothly then you might enjoy it sort of thing so it might be worth a try but if you if you start having problems don't hesitate to just jump out sort of thing oh also it's really frustrating it's i fucking love iso shooters it's the only game that i've liked the spiders in i had a little army of spider bots running around with me so it's got that going for <laughs> it not really spiders yeah spider bots but it's really frustrating i'm a big fan of the cyberpunk aesthetic and i'm a huge fan of isometric shooters i love them i think they are brilliant i love the mechanic of firing with the one stick and moving with the other and that is why the only game that i would recommend is ruiner it is so good it's one of my favorite titles uh, indie titles of the last five years and it shits all over the ascent it's not multiplayer it's single player but it's got a story that's great it's got an amazing aesthetic visually it stands up still and the soundtrack is banging so go and play ruiner spend your money on that don't play the ascent until it is absolutely fixed oh <sighs> <laughs> Should we do Game Pass or Play? No, we've done Game Pass or Play. Fucking game in 60 seconds. Cunt. Uh, <laughs> Should we do game time. in 60 seconds? Yeah. Well, I've even fucking written Game Pass or Play in the I script know. twice. I thought I got confused when you were asking me. You've, like, you've, been uh, calling, you've been calling it Game Pass or Play for the past, like, four weeks now. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. Right, game in 60 seconds. Sean... Kick us off. Tell us last week's okay. clues and fucking go for it. So my clue my brain ain't working. for last week was my kid is just clumsy as fuck, tripping over every fucking thing. And that was Human Fall Flat. Well, hey. Which, I like that one. Which was guessed pretty much instantly. Immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a new record. And my one, my one was Christopher Columbus or Jesus without a T can really tell a good story. And that is Chris or Christ Tales. It's Chris. Chris. Chris Tales. Chris. And that also got guessed immediately by about five people this week. We had more DMs this week. Than it's, we good game had. That. it's because you you slated everyone for not taking part in Game in 60 Seconds. <laughs> I did, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. I saw I saw someone message us saying, How how do I take part then? <laughs> oh you're, shit, yeah. You were like, never actually said, have we? You were like, just guess it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're I've never actually I've never actually told people, have I, how to <laughs> Play game in sixty <laughs> seconds. It's just we just We're two seasons to, in going to people randomly on the streets, shouting a clue at them, and then walking off, whistling with Mate, pants we're and ending pockets. season two, and I've just realised I've never told people how to enter a game in sixty seconds. Um, DM us on Twitter. <laughs> So <laughs> get a, find us on Twitter. If you know the name of the game, DM us and be like, yo, this is the name of the game. And if you're wrong, then we'll laugh at you. And if you're right, we'll tell you to get a fucking life. Um, I'm so excited for my clue this week. Right. Oh, Sean, you tell yours first. And Duncan, you tell yours as well. Because Sean and Duncan inadvertently picked the same game. The stars aligned. So two clues for one. Oh, very good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Okay. Don't say them at the same time, though, because I can't be bothered editing that. <laughs> oh, Sean, okay. you go first, or Duncan, do you get to... But oh, fuck me. Go? I'll go first. Cool. Space, but not in the galaxy far away. Ooh, that's a good one. And mine is, that celestial body is getting a bit close. That's another good one. So, Duncan and Sean have the same game, and I'm about to say the most ridiculous one I've done so far. So... Joseph Fritzl didn't keep any of these down there. <laughs> Joseph Fritzl, he didn't keep oh. any of these down there. Jesus. 
Christ. And I'd like to apologise to all of Austria and also the Fritzl family d- for, for that entry. i just got to say one thing. Every time I hear Joseph Fritzl, back when we worked in the old office, Harry, um, also worked on insulation, and I, and I just randomly said, oh, I wonder if Joseph Fritzl insulated his dungeon. And then, <laughs> and then one of the guys there turned around and went, of course he did. He's not a monster. <laughs> Every time, I, every time I remember it, I just think it's, it's not a monster. Oh my God, I snorted and everything. I oh, just Adam doesn't listen oh to the pods, God. but I just <laughs> it's cool. He just is not a monster. <laughs> it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Oh, that's oh, yeah. so stupid. Oh, mate. So I oh, I need a moment in there. That's oh, stupid. I need a moment. Oh. Well, thankfully, I'm going to get my moment now, aren't I, Dunks? Because it's your turn. Oh, yeah. So, with Duncan being in the podcast again this week... All oh, right, I've got to prep myself for this radio voice. <laughs> so, with... <laughs> oh, I've got the giggles now. Oh, I've given myself too much, like, too much pressure. Too many words. Uh, yeah, so, blah, blah, blah. Here we go. <laughs> Welcome to Duncan Voices Indie Choices. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, that's the best I'm getting. Jeez. That is the absolute best that I'm managing this week. <laughs> Duncan, yeah. you've played two games this week. Well, you played three and you told us the other one's been out for about ten years, so not to worry about it. Um, you have been playing Splitgate and The Wild at Heart and you like one of them and you dislike the other. Now, Sean, which one do you think he liked? I haven't actually seen Splitgate. I think I've seen The Wild at Heart. That's the one that left Game Pass recently, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's so, still on it. Is it still on? Oh, is it still on there? Yeah, it's definitely still on it. I swear I saw something Maybe about... it's leaving. Uh, it's oh, definitely possibly. on it I played it today. Oh, okay. Well... So I only know one or... of the games, so I don't really know what Splitgate is about. So I'll guess that that's the shit I... one. Split... <laughs> Split gate, from what I can see, is Portal meets Halo. So okay. I'm gonna say that I'm gonna say that you disliked the Wild at Heart because I played about five minutes, of the, no, about an hour of the Wild at Heart, and I very, very didn't like it. So Duncan, which game did you not like? The Wild at Heart, Harry. <laughs> Fucking get it! <laughs> it's so pretentious, isn't it? So it's... pretentious, Duncan. So like, um, it looks amazing. It, it, it looks like a like a children's storybook. So the whole the whole premise of it is that you are a kid who gets lost in the woods, and then you meet all these fantastical little creatures in there, and and weird old men that live in the woods. I don't know why anyone, anyone who played it hasn't thought that's weird. Um, <laughs> and it's it's a bit like uh, I guess Pikmin, where you you have these little oh, I think they're called wildlings that that follow you around, and you send them off to do your stuff. So if there's a big frog that needs killing you chuck 15 of your little wildlings at him to kill him and you, it's all, you don't do anything it's all passive for you um and then you know if they need to you know break up a book box or something like that um i played about two hours now which probably isn't enough to, to judge a game but i just haven't had any fun with it the whole time i'm like well i think i should like it this definitely ticks my boxes you know lovely kind of hand-drawn style it sounds really nice um production values look really good it's now also an indie game um I just, i'm just not having any fun and i'm kind of every time i'm playing it i'm like oh i kind of started to dislike it a little bit so i'm just waiting for the thing where i'm like oh this is this is great i'm having loads of fun with this um so i played a little bit earlier on just just to make sure that i was definitely 100 percent sure that i didn't like it and then um and then at night time you uh you have like uh fucking dementors or whatever come out of the ground and they chase you around and you can't kill him she just got to leg it and it's just oh just fuck off with all that just just let me play the game like you've got to find your way back to camp but because of the way it's drawn it's not immediately obvious where you need to go um it's so you bet you basically uh like a 2d character on a 3d plane because if you remember what i said about observer a while ago how much Ooh, i fucking yes. love that kind of thing um <laughs> i just oh yeah i mean it looks really nice i'm sure it's good just yeah just oh whatever 
kind of feel like an, I should issue carry on. The that I had with the game, and there's a li- there's another game that we'll be talking about later on, um, is it was very much style over substance for me, mm. in that it looked really pretty, and it's like, oh, let's spend all this time making it look nice, and then they were like, yeah, but people are going to play it, and they're like, yeah, but look how nice it looks. Look at, oh, doesn't that drawing look lovely? And they just sort of forgot to make it any good. <laughs> No gameplay. It's odd. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing like for me. There was nothing to do in it, and it bored me instantly. Um, and the thing is, is there's a few other games. So, ah, oh, what was the game that Xbox Game Pass got us to play? Uh, uh, Night in the Woods. Yeah, mm. yeah. So I played that, and I really enjoyed it. Um, it was a little bit iffy, and there were some gameplay decisions that I didn't quite like. But I played that, and I thought it was really nice. And I thought, all oh, the world at heart, that could be very similar. And it, yeah, didn't like it. But I'm excited to hear about Splitgate because I know nothing about this other than it's free on xbox yes it's not game pass but it's but it's free to play um because i've been in a bit of a weird place for games the last few weeks i just i said it to you harry the other day like i've everything i play i just don't really want to play just unmotivated to play anything um and I just, and I downloaded Splitgate on on a whim, and like I said earlier, it it, it is exactly on a whim, <laughs> if you like. <laughs> um, <laughs> buy me dinner first. Um, uh, but yeah, it, it's it's effectively like like a Quake Arena shooter cross with Halo, cross with Portal, and it is <laughs> it's phenomenal Sold. how good it is. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's I can't explain it any better than that. So um, every Every kind of, every game you start, so you have a you haven't you don't have a portal gun, but you have it on your wrist or whatever. But it's the same principle as portal. So you have an orange portal and a blue portal, um, uh, and then it's just then you have like a like a two gun system, like you like you have the Halo. So you'll have a battle rifle or an assault rifle, for etc. And you can pick up more powerful guns around the arena. Um, but it's 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 so much fun. I just I completely took me by surprise. So. Um, it's you've got the capability for like proper big brain play so i'm very much an amateur at it so my my level of skill i'm doing all right at it but i'm I'm just running around not really using portals because my brain doesn't hasn't caught up with it yet you're not thinking in portals no but then (laughs) but then it's some like really when you when you pull something off it's what it's one of my favorite things in games so i was uh there was a, a wanker um up on a ledge above me i didn't know how to get up to him but he was just up there sniping everyone so i stuck a portal in front of me and then a portal in front of him and then shot him through my portal um <laughs> <laughs> it's just and there's so many things like that um I, I can always... imagine when you did that, you like turned around, like, did you see that? Like... And you just sat alone, and your cat is watching you, and you're like, <laughs> did did you see how cool that was? And the... the cat just looks at you with sheer ambivalence. The amount of clips I'm recording off it because it's one of those games where you could be shy, but it makes you feel very cool um, <laughs> doing stuff. <laughs> Because um, yeah. I did one thing, and I, I recorded it, sent it to a mate. I'm like, I'm fucking wicked at this, mate. Yeah, like catch up, catch up, <laughs> noob. <laughs> but, 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 but I literally, um, I think the game was like um, shotguns and and snipers or a sniper shot or whatever I think it was called. So I just like chucked a couple of portals randomly around because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, and I accidentally like backed in through one. But my other portal was on the ground, so I kind of, so I kind of like popped out like on the ground, <laughs> turned around and just shotgun a guy in the back. But it looked so cool; it was a complete fluke. Um, no, it, it wasn't Duncan. It's, it's 4D chess. It's big brain I'll, I'll time. Send, I'll send it to you. It's so funny because I'm kind of like turning the camera around really slowly because I've got no fucking idea where I am. And I killed the bloke. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to save it because I'm like super fucking <laughs> super pro, mate. Yeah, we'll you're so up. suave. Yeah, it's <laughs> it. But the the gun plays really tight. Um, like a quim. Um, <laughs> it's great. I, it's I mean, it's free to play. Might not be for everyone, but it's it's re it's scratching that itch that I need just before Halo comes out. Um, yeah. Uh, there's a battle pass system in it, which, from what I can tell, is free. You can buy, um, buy like you know different levels of it using currency, but you level up, level up for free. 
There's a Game Pass perk right now that gets you yeah. a free skin as well. Um, and some of the skins are pretty cool. Um, it's a big cat, so I'm waiting for that one to unlock so I can buy it. <laughs> but I mean, I, I rarely will, will chuck money at a free-to-play game. Um, but the developers of this have been have been so cool. I don't know if you've seen them. I think it's like 10, 47 games. So um, it was so popular. They came out and they were like, it's really popular, guys. We had no idea. <laughs> we're trying to get some money to... <laughs> to turn the servers back on and, uh, and they've just been so honest about it and it's not like oh we're offline for maintenance we'll back up any time any minute now they're like it's going a bit nuts guys uh <laughs> bear with us we'll sort it out um <laughs> shit's but, crazy yeah but because they're so honest with it people are, people are loving it and, and i'm gonna i'm gonna buy skins and, and all sorts because it's just want to support it because it is it's so much fun i really can't can't emphasize enough um enough about it great well i'm in a bit of a I'm in a bit of a sticky situation here, Duncan, because we usually give you the slap noise, but it, from the sounds of it, I said, will this game get a cheeky finger oh, of getting, approval? It's getting more than a finger. You said it's getting a full <laughs> fist. <laughs> right, up to the, <laughs> right up to the elbow. I'm a bit concerned that I now have to try and find a sound effect of someone being fisted. Uh, <sighs> So, and the problem is as well, last week I was over at Sean's, we could have just recorded it ourselves, but we don't have that option this week, so not really sure what to do about it. Which one of you would have been the birthing cow in that scenario? Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely Sean, definitely Sean. <laughs> You could just get a sound, get the sound of those like latex gloves just slapping against your wrist as you like pull them. I will do, yeah, I will. I'll what I'll do is I'll get a noise of a zip unzipping, and then a just a punch, punch a punch noise, noise. A, and then a punch noise. Yeah. So Duncan, <laughs> if you say that it gets the fist of approval, that means I have to do that oh, and get that sound effect oh, done. So ever. Duncan, what do you give this game? Harry, I give Splitgate my fist of approval up to the elbow. <laughs> How good the game is determines where on the forearm it goes to. <laughs> just to the wrist. This one's just at the wrist. <laughs> yeah. How good is it? Well, my shoulder is touching the the, uh, <laughs> the yeah. clitoris. It can oh, smell oh like a effect. Um, what have this podcast descended into? Sorry, I do this all the time, don't I? I just ruin it. I know, it. mate. You, you bring us down. I love it. Oh. It's great. You don't, Actually, no, you don't bring us down. We, When you're not here, we pretend to be much more classy than we actually are. And you normalise us. <laughs> so <laughs> it's invaluable to us, Duncan. Good. Oh. Uh, but Split Gate's really good. Yeah, get it. Should we, should we talk about another really good game? Oh, yeah. Should we, should we do it? Okay. Very quickly, Sean, Art of Rally. You don't shit. like it, do you? Fucking shit. <laughs> I hate it as well. <laughs> it's, it's, I really like it. It's the worst handling I've ever seen in a fucking racing game. Like, No, you, I've got no issues with you it. Can tap, You're messaging me you tap like, the brake, oh, I go over a hill. You tap nah. the brake at 100 miles You're an hour wrong. and it'll come to a stop in like two metres. You, you can understeer while oversteering at the same time. The... At, like analog stick like feels it. really inconsistent, I guess. Looked so like, pretty. so like you can move it slightly halfway and it will nice. not turn at all. And you do the exact same Cars movement again, and it will go like completely off the road as if someone with fucking Parkinson's is behind the wheel. So yeah, it's shit. Well, <laughs> it's my Desperado I'm, I'm three. Totally, I'm totally fine with it. It's I think it looks really nice. Absolute bollocks. <laughs> I love the cars. Oh, also I think the soundtrack is great. It does look. The soundtrack it, is banging. Yeah. And it does look really nice, but I don't. It was something I only noticed like a couple of rallies in. It's really static. So like the um, African one where there's like the elephants and giraffes, they they're just like completely stationary and don't move at all. And I was like, surely, yeah, well, but it it would take ten minutes to rig a neck and slowly animate it like moving up and down a bit. So that was that was a bit weird. Something I noticed. Yeah, but you just drive past them, so it's fine. Yeah, but you um, drive past everything and my opinion, my opinion is I've Doesn't got no matter. issues with the steering <laughs> whatsoever. Um I think that it's a really fun little game. Oh. I love the visual style of it and I love the driving. So I do love the visual style. I'm giving music, it a game like play. I'm giving it a game play. Sean is giving it a game pass. Yeah. But I'm really worried about this next game. <laughs> <laughs> because I've been playing the absolute tits off of it. 
and I love it. And also, um, the sound composer, Darren Korb, who is a genius, mm-hmm. um, we tweeted at him today saying, like, hey, you're a genius, marry me, please. And he tweeted back, like, hey, guys, thank you, that's cool. And I fangirled for quite some time. Um, Duncan, what do you think of Hades? I see spectacular in it. <laughs> Just... It's very, it's very spectacular. So um, Sean. Yeah. Sean, what yep. do you think of Hades? I think we need to set the like picture sort of thing so people know why you're making such a big deal of <laughs> my opinion. Of you it. fucking hate roguelikes. <laughs> so I you detest roguelikes. They are my least favourite genre because I just don't see the fun in like having everything wiped and starting all over again. It just gets really tedious and boring for me personally. Because um, you've played a few different styles of yeah, roguelikes you've made me in play the time a few. that we done came. You've made me play Pass. a few for Game Pass or Play, and each time... West of Dead and Slay the Spire are the two that come to mind And for me. Enter the Gungeon. Um, and Enter the Gungeon as well, yeah. And they Which, all, to be fair, I didn't like either. Yeah, they all end up the same, where the first couple of runs, I'm like, oh, this is all right. And then I just quickly get bored, because it's the exact same thing. And I always say that the one thing they need to do is to have some form of progression keep with you over each run so each run feels important and makes a difference and it doesn't feel like you're just starting completely from scratch and turns out if you if you do that have progress you end up with a game of the year like Hades oh, <laughs> yes <laughs> oh man oh I was so nervous that you were going to be like and Hades doesn't do that so it's shit no, I, it, Hades does more than that because the one thing I never even thought of when I was saying about the other ones was story progressing with each run and i mm, I, I love how the little like not even in the main like when area Nyx vanishes yeah or um like achilles Nyx just vanishes and off a it's few like times for me. where's yeah and it's like where's nix gone like oh but like there's a, just this one first thing first i just need to tell everybody on xbox if you pet cerberus 10 times you get an achievement and not enough people are doing that so <laughs> go and pet the cerberus please i've only done it the once Ten times, get the achievement. But Sean, please, because I'm loving this game. I think it's fucking incredible. Please tell me your experience in a roguelike. Well, I was, I was just going to say as well with the. Uh, it's not just the story in the like main hub, I guess, um, that carries on. There's little bits that happen in different areas within each run. So there's a music player that I've got in mind, and they keep talking about their like muse and this person that they used to like adore and that. And you can actually find them in an area in the run and talk to them. And basically, as you keep going through different runs and coming back to the hub, this like little sort of side story progresses as well. It's just so good. Um, gameplay wise, it's amazing like <clears throat> no run feels the same despite you doing the same like areas and even though i think i'm on 18 19 runs now i think there's still like new rooms or new areas that just open up or new bosses that come out of nowhere so i st- still haven't i haven't even begun to get slightly like bored of it every time i die i'm just like oh start again <laughs> here i go killing again yeah <laughs> and also there's one thing that I, I love in games is when the like atmosphere of a game suddenly changes and there's this like brief moment of I guess reflection sort of thing and it's usually towards the end of the game when like the characters are like, at a campfire sort of thing and they think back on what's happened but super giant somehow managed to get this nailed every time so with bastion it was when build that wall starts playing in the game and i yeah. I just paused in that bit and a couple hours ago when i was playing hades i had it happen here as well i was uh in i was in just like a normal room in the second sort of realm and i went into the next room and it, it suddenly went like quiet and there was some singing and instantly i recognized voice it's the exact same singer that done build that wall for bastion and i literally just sat there for about 10 minutes listening to the song so uh um, if you if you haven't heard it or haven't like found that room yet, go on Spotify and listen to Good Riddance on the uh, Hades soundtrack because it is just as good as Build That Wall. Just listen to the whole H- Hades soundtrack. Listen, listen to the whole thing, slaps. yeah. But Good Riddance is like it's it's basically Hades version of Build That Wall. It's like yeah. soft, slow lyrics sort of thing. But yeah, just so Dunks, how are you finding it? Yeah, I I just um I love it. It's because I think we're all kind of massive fans of Bastion anyway, and it just feels it feels as good as that felt like ten ten years ago or something. Yeah. Um. I really like 
So we, we spoke about Death's Door a couple of weeks ago. I'm starting to get a bit fed up of dying in that and having to kind of make up my way all the way back to the boss or whatever. But whereas in Hades, like I'm actually, I, I quite like dying because I, I love, I just love the chatter when, when you get back to the, to the, yeah, um, the to the palace. With the uh, underworld when she tells you like, oh, I see you got killed by one of those bomb boys. Well, next time, maybe yeah. you shouldn't just stand it's, still. <laughs> Yeah. And you almost, it's so well done because you almost like feel embarrassed. So I, I killed uh, Meg on my, my second or third run. Um, I managed to get up to the the second boss. I forget his, I forget his name. The but then, hydro. yes, that's it. And uh, but I, I'm I'm stuck on Meg again. I can't get past her. But it's like I'm all, I'm almost like embarrassed to go back to go back to the palace because people are like, <laughs> oh, you fucking keep dying at Meg. You shit. Um, it's it's incredible. I just it's even how when you die and you come back, like the only way I can explain his walk out of the blood is like Charlie Brown when he's upset <laughs> yeah. walking past yeah, Snoopy. Like it's like head down dishevelled, and it's every every time that you die. You do feel like a little bit like, oh shit, I'm back here again, and they said that I would be. Oh, no. You feel like an embarrassed teenager yeah. who's like walking in at midnight, like trying to not be heard by his parents. <laughs> um, my absolute favorite thing about the game is the voice acting and the music. Mm. Um, I think the voice acting is just stunningly good. I think every single character is brought to life in a way that maybe they weren't quite in Bastion. Um, I still prefer Bastion just because I've played and finished it, uh, but I'm fairly certain that this is going to take over the lead uh, once I've put more time into it. I'm about 14 runs in, uh, beating the Meg twice, always, always die after that point. And every time I have died, like you say, I, I sort of... I look forward to the challenge of going back and being like, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to try it with a shield this time and see what I do. Mm. Um, Yeah, and it has active progression that saves. You don't start again every single time. Um, You you actually improve, not just as a player, but you can improve your character. And I do also want to say that the addition of God Mode is brilliant because not everybody likes roguelikes. And some people will want to finish the game to see what it's all about, but not have to just keep dying and dying and dying. Well, and, so and people, big, massive props. People with different like uh, disabilities and that who would struggle to play the game normally as well can still enjoy it because it slowly ramps up your like damage resistance as well. So it'll, it'll, it'll get it to the point where it will be like the right difficulty for the person playing it instead of just being oh. like a set level. So I, I love oh, I love great. the yeah. inclusion of God Mode. Because we've got a couple of um, people that we're friends with on Twitter. We've got um, Cerebral Paul uh, and we've also got UK Dazarus and they're both disabled gamers and um, Paul has spoken many times about how the inclusion of easy modes on games helps him massively. Uh, he actually got a load of abuse on Twitter a few weeks ago um, by Dark Souls um, fans for him to dare to say that he would like an easy mode in that game and then the same thing happened with Double Fine when they announced the easy mode in their game he got a load of abuse on that as well um, literally telling a disabled person he needs to not be disabled to play the game and both of these guys I know are playing Hades and I'm pretty sure that the inclusion of a god mode is something that would help them play mm-hmm. um, and if you don't follow them on Twitter search for them UK Dazarus and Cerebral Paul they're both great guys anyway i got a lot of time for them but it just makes it more accessible for more people and the more people that play hades the better because it's phenomenal yep Um, there's there's two takeaways i've got from hades so far and that is this game has set a new standard for roguelikes like just yeah it, it shows that you can have progression carry on while still starting from the start again so if, if there's yeah. any roguelike in the future now that takes everything away from you i'm just not gonna play it <laughs> and two yeah, that's a fair point. i think super giant games has got to be the most consistent indie developers in recent times like oh, 100%. every game they make has been a hit so i think that's that's been my two takeaways and they they just seem really... to nail the narrator sort of role each time i just really love how re- rewarding it is because i get really annoyed in the game if i play it for half an hour die and i lose it i lose all my progress like even even if it's only kind of really incremental oh well i've earned a little bit of more of that like the soul currency at least
least I've got a bit further, and then that will mm. spur me on a little bit for the next run. Um, it's it's unbelievable. It's it's perfect. There's literally nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Well, just as we were talking about people getting abuse for easy modes, I go on Twitter and I see that we're currently getting abuse <laughs> because <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, I said that uh games should have easy modes two days ago and i'm getting abuse for it so it's like a fucking bat signal for you isn't it harry just <laughs> nobbies on twitter like summoning you fucking I'm, battle i'm drawn to morons on twitter like a moth to a flame honestly and i if anyone's out there with like an artistic bone in their body and would like to draw me as a moth and then a moron as a candle and me just like burning myself <laughs> Please do that, because I'll put it on a shirt. <laughs> uh, Get Sean Labrie on it. Um, yeah, although, to be honest, I think General C is going to be keeping him busy for the next year. Because he keeps DMing me like, I've got another idea for a picture I want him to draw me. It's like, dude, he's got other people that need business. Um, that does bring us actually quite nicely on to sort of wrap up the podcast. Uh, next week, we are taking a break from our normal sort of features. Uh, we'll be doing a Q&A special. So if you have any questions for us, uh, send them in with your Game in 60 Second answers <laughs> uh, to Gamers Watch Crew on Twitter. Uh, you can also DM us on Facebook and Instagram, but we don't check them. So should we uh, uh, find us on Twitter. Should we do a special community day for it? Yes. Ah, bingo. We'll do a community community day which will and be we'll get some questions in tomorrow when this episode releases it will yeah or if you're not listening to this on the day of release you like fucking missed people, it it will be <laughs> it will be the, <laughs> the day after this episode came out um but it's going to be hosted by general c um he is an awesome guy played a little bit of gang beasts with him a few weeks ago we talk daily in our group chat and uh, he's got some wicked content planned and he's also got a game pass series that he does so he's going to be hosting a little q a episode we're probably going to split it into two chunks uh just to make things a bit easier for us but we've got that to look forward to and i can't quite believe i'm going to say this sean that's the end of season two that's a wrap it is it's a chicken teriyaki wrap um mm. duncan a massive thank you for being on the show uh through season one and through season two we absolutely love having you on because it makes my life easier when i'm making the highlights because i just isolate your audio and i'm like <laughs> oh, there he is saying something funny that's right can't you don't say much but when you do it's usually banging so a huge thank you uh, we'd also like to say a few other thank yous um i want to say thank you to tom uh, Striblob, who comes onto the show whenever he can. He's been quite busy recently, and I'm hoping that in season three we can get him on again. He's not been streaming recently, but he's always great when he's on the show as well. And Sean, should we say thank you to the midweek mix up for just being awesome? Yeah, I think they would be slightly offended if we didn't mention them. <laughs> Let's not let's not mention them then. They were Fuck it. they were the reason my wrist almost fell off my hand at work a few months ago. Now, excuse me, from the notifications. Oh, okay. I thought that I thought you meant you were doing the old uh, flute salute <laughs> <laughs> at work. I don't know what you do. Fuck it. I don't know. I watched a video of a guy today watching porn in a library. I don't know what you're doing with your time, mate. Why did you watch that? It was like this public freakout video on Reddit, and this this old this old dude was just in the library watching hardcore porn while everyone was shouting at him. It was hilarious. Um, but yeah, Sean, say thank you to who you need to say thank you to as well. Um, thank you to everyone the same, really. Like midweek, Dutch, Owen, Pat, uh, Blom, Chris, uh, Finn. I'm trying to remember all of their names off by heart. I think that's all of them. I'm really sorry if I missed one of you. <laughs> Everyone at Lords of Gaming as well. And, um, yeah. Thank you for adopting Sean. Yeah. Um, he's been in that crate for a while. Loads of people <laughs> have come in. We almost did get a new owner for him, but it turned out that that owner actually beats up puppies in his spare time. <laughs> Uh, so we decided not to go that route. Um, and then he tried pyramid selling to us. It was weird. Um, but yeah, just a huge thank you to every person who listens. We've just hit 5,000 downloads, which is utter insanity. Um, and we've just got big things planned for the next season. And just thank you, really. Not much more to say, is there? Well, we can also say to make sure to tune into season three, please. Oh shit, yeah, don't forget to listen to next week's episode and follow us on Twitter and don't buy our merch and all that lot. No, um, buy our bloody so merch. We got... Oh shit, yeah, we got new merch. Yeah. Yeah. 
Is it yeah, not we've horrendously got... priced shipping now? Because I'd like a t-shirt, <laughs> but I'm not fucking paying the tenner to get it shipped from Detroit. No, I'll um, I'll send you the link privately uh, because I don't know what it is. And I'm not going <laughs> to even pretend to know how to find it at the moment. So it's newly themed for season three as well. Oh. It is, and we do need a couple of other just generic branded shirts with the new like Gamers Watch logo on there as well. But I will get some yeah, designed. Fuck it. We got because hopefully I'll have. We got two weeks, haven't we? I'll have a lot less uh, After Effects and Premiere Pro time that I need to dedicate to yeah. once the season launches. Can you do a Wank and a Magnum t-shirt so I can have one? Yeah, we can yeah. do a Wank and a Magnum t-shirt Thanks. for you, mate. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to Thanks. probably get approval from Magnum, but I don't see that being a trouble, do just you? Not, just an off-brand chocolate lolly would be... <laughs> wank and a chocolate ice cream. Yeah. And on that... <laughs> a reach around in the Solero. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Sake. Oh. Oh. Does it change oh. depending on what colour shirt you get? Yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah. orange, Magnum's black. <laughs> One for every day of the week. If you get a tie dye shirt, it's the Blumpkin and the Twister. <laughs> <laughs> and on that, ever Bukaki and the Bourbon Biscuit. <laughs> for fuck's sake. <laughs> Keep on listening. <laughs> a finger in a flake. <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. Oh, I can't what have I done? oh. Sean, keep on listening. Keep on gaming. Oh my god, that's the end of season two, Sean. That's how we ended it.